Good morning, y'all. You know, I come on here at least once a year, and I um I try to get back into this whole YouTube thing, right? Um, but let me say this. Um, I actually got a purpose this time, and that is to encourage someone that might be going through my situation. Um, normally when I get on YouTube, it's, I'm trying to grow my following, get my watch time up actually for, um, you know, I, I want to want it to be a YouTuber and have this be a second stream, third stream, whatever, how many streams I'm on of income, but that's not my purpose today. My purpose today is to let you guys know that even in a storm, you can find a rainbow. Even in a storm, you can find a rainbow. The last um, video that I made, I was telling you guys how I was feeling like blah. And um, I didn't know what it was, you know. But sometimes God, uh, he speaks to you. And he speaks to you without you knowing you being spoken to, if that makes any sense. He speaks to you without you um, being known that you're being spoken to. And he was really telling me something was going on in my body. So this is during, after pandemic or whatever, I, you know, I get a physical every single year. And I have to express to you ladies Especially when you get of a certain age, you cannot miss a year and going to go see what is going on with you. You cannot miss a year. Find you a doctor that you are comfortable with. Find you a doctor who is thorough and who cares genuinely about you. If you don't have health insurance, make sure that the next open enrollment um, that you go ahead and you sign up. I was always a person who at work when they offered uh, insurance, I'd pass it by because I didn't want that to come out of my check. In fact, I had been self-employed for so long that I had in, finally enrolled in Covered California. I've been um, consistently enrolled in that for the last four years. But now that I am have an actual job, that's a whole nother video, um, now I am... I have insurance coverage with that as well. So right now I'm double covered. Going back, I'm all off track about what I wanted to talk to you about. After feeling like I was blah and this and this and that, I still, during the whole pandemic, I was feeling depressed. I know a part, part of it was just being confined to the home because especially in the summertime, I'm more of an outgoing person. I like to entertain. I like to do all of those things. And I just was feeling some type of way. Plus, you know, I could say, honestly, feeling lonely. Like, you know, I've been single for so long. I've dated a few guys. I've tried to be in relationship. And none of that works out because guess what? I'm not a woman who settles. So... I'm not going to be with you just for the fact of to say I have someone that's never been me. I'd rather just be alone, um, not necessarily lonely, but be alone than to deal with a lot of the drama, right? And the headaches that come with the relationship that is just not a good fit for you. Anyway, I'm so off track and you got to forgive me because my thoughts are all over the place because this is really important information that I'm giving to you guys. Anyway, make sure that you are going to get your physicals, even if you're not older. I will be 52 years old at the end of this month. I will be, um, you know, I'm, I'm well into my 50s. I haven't um, had menstruated since February, so I know that I'm perimenopause because they said that you have to go a full year or so before you actually consider it to be in menopause. And it's only been February, March, April, May, June. It's only been four months because, you know, July is not over. So it's only been four months since I haven't had a cycle. Anyway, so, and because of the pandemic, uh, my physical was delayed because, of course, they weren't seeing anybody. I was able to get my blood work done and all that. But my mammogram, normally I would have it in March. I actually didn't get to have it until May, right? So last year when I had a mammogram, I had an abnormally abnormal mammal where I had to go back and have a 3D mammal with um, with 
a ultrasound, but it came back that day. I was given notification that it was just like a cyst. So I'm like, okay, whew, because that waiting, that whole going back and all that is very stressful on a person when you don't know what's going on with you and they're telling you that something's coming up wrong. And I know I'm at that age where stuff just starts going bad, right? So this year, I expected to have uh, a mammogram that was not um, normal because, I mean, if, if I have a cyst then, I, I haven't taken any magic potion. It wasn't treated. Of course, it's still there. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going to get it abnormal. I'm going to go back and then they're going to... Um, they're going to do my area again and uh, kind of measure it to see if it's grown. So I wasn't afraid. All right. So I did the mammogram. I get the call that it's abnormal, except, you know, which was no big deal until my primary doctor. See, I got that from the lab that it was abnormal and I needed to come back. Okay, cool. But when I got my primary call who told me that, uh, my breast had asymmetry now. So basically one breast, breast was growing bigger than the other. And I kept saying to myself, you know, I have been noticing that, that sometimes I put on a bra and it, like one, it, one side is more lopsided than the other, but I, I never wanted to um, make myself paranoid. So I never tripped. Like I looked at the breast, they looked the same and I have very large breasts. So I would feel, and I didn't feel any lumps or anything like that. So, but I got scared because I looked up asymmetry, which is a sign of breast cancer. Right. And I had that in my right breast. So a week later I go to the doctor and I have the same 3d mammogram and the ultrasound. When you're in that job and you aware of how things look, you already know, technically you can't tell me anything, but the facial expressions told me, right? So I, I see the lady and she's on there and she's like, okay, I'm going to have you do one more thing. I just want to make sure I get everything. But I could tell the look of concern that she had on her face. This is the person doing the uh, 3D mammogram. So then I'm going right after that to have the um, the ultrasound. So I'll go in there. Now, last year, it was one area. So this year, there was three areas. So there's the same lump, which is towards my inner breast, but now there's one like on the outer side. And then she did my lymph nodes. I, I knew right then and there. I knew right then and there. I was like, there's something wrong. And then I, I could look. At her face, facial expressions, where she was just telling me, I mean, it, it, it told everything. It, it told volumes. And so, because last year when it had it happen, I was telling the girl, I said, it's not cancer, is it? She's like, girl, it don't look like cancer to me, but I'm going to have the doctor look at it. So they know. The the people who's doing the ultrasound, they they definitely know, right? So I'm like, okay. So she said, I'm going to have the doctor come in and talk to you. And I said, oh, Lord, here we go. You know, I was looking forward to being period free. Um, I'm, I'm going a little off, but allow me this time. Allow me this time because this is my therapy talking to you, the subscribers who hung in there, even though I haven't posted in forever. Thank you. But OK, so I'm going off a little track. But in my mind, first of all, um, I had a whole plan for my life. Don't make no plans for your life because God going to tell you, listen, it's on my time, not yours, whatever the case may be. Whatever reason this is happening to me, it don't have nothing to do with me and my plans I thought I was going to have for my life. First plan was, oh, when my youngest graduate, I'm going to buy me a little condo and I'm going to have a hot girl summer all year long until the good Lord called me home. That didn't work. Nah. My son graduates from high school. Everybody moves in with me. My daughter decides she wants to be a drug addict. Now I'm a full-time grandmother. So that was a stress in itself. And the stress of dealing with her on the streets and trying to pull, reel her back in, all that stuff was hitting me. And then my youngest son, he just was not at a level. He's not at a level where I could say, oh, he could be on his own. It, I, it never was going to be like that. It was going to be, he's going to live with my oldest son. I'm going to pay his portion of the rent. I don't, oof, child, I had all kind of plans. And Lord said, that ain't it. Okay. So going here, I'm thinking I'm about to get my mammogram. I'm going to stay healthy. I'm working out. I'm eating right. I'm doing all of this stuff. Okay. And um, 
hey, old girl came in there. She was very nice. But when I tell you it was, a, I would say partially the worst day for me because I knew it in my gut. If no matter how positive I tried to stay, I knew it. Right. So she comes in there and she says, well, you have a couple of um, areas that's causing concern. We're going to go ahead and do a biopsy. I said, you didn't move. You didn't graduate. You didn't graduate from a mammogram to a straight up biopsy. And so, of course, I'm talking to other people that I've known had a biopsy. A oh, girl, it came out benign. You know, there's just something they got to do. You're older. You got dense breasts, blah, 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 blah. This is going to happen. But my spirit, listen to your spirit. My spirit told me that you about to start a new journey in your life. You, this is something that uh, one more thing that you're going to have to get through one more thing. And I was not happy about it. Very angry, very upset with the Lord. Like, why do I keep having things happen to me? You know, why, you know, and I just didn't understand it. So anyway, this is right before I'm about to go to vacation. Me and having a girls trip, going to Miami, having a good time. So of course, after I have my biopsy the Friday before I fly out to Miami, the whole trip, that's all I could think about. I cried. I tried to be strong in front of my friends and my sister, uh, but it was very hard. I was very uh, melancholy. I was very depressed and very like trying to enjoy moments, but I was so deep into my thoughts and my, my gut instinct was telling me that I was in for the fight of my life. And, um, I just knew it. So we're back on Sunday night, Tuesday morning, I get the call. You know, if there's good news about it, um, I don't have cancer in my lymph nodes. And the same benign lump is still benign, but it's still abnormal. But I do, one of the lumps is cancerous. So I don't even know the date, honey. Most I, I'm finding out through support groups and every, everybody knows the date and the time that they got diagnosed. I'm sure I can go through my call log and document this because I said I need to document my journey. Right. Because it's just started. I haven't had any treatment yet. First appointment with the surgical oncologist is July 13th. But your girl has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Right. So uh, it is invasive ductile carcinoma. Um, I'm hoping that it's early. The doctor said it was early. But until I talk to an oncologist who can read my reports and all this kind of stuff, um, I'm numb. I'm numb until I have complete confirmation from a specialist in the area that this is early. Regardless of it being early, there's some decisions I'm going to have to make about treatment. Um, I don't know if radiation, I'm reading that some people just elect to have a double mastectomy and, and skip radiation and chemo and all of that stuff. Because truth be told, I was thinking about getting new boobs. Anyway, anyway, so if I could get a double mastectomy, heal from that, no, no radiation, no chemo, I think I would prefer that. But of course, I want to hear the options. It's so new. Nobody's told me my options. Nobody's told me really the stage of cancer that I have. I'm hoping that it's early because like I said, I go to the doctor every year. So it has to be right. Um, I'm trying to remain positive. I'm still, I love the job that I'm at now. So I like being busy. Uh, I'm still full-time grandma. I have a 12 year old. He's in fact, he'll be 13 in four days. He's out to Knott's Berry Farm today, celebrating his birthday with his friends. So I still have a full life that I want to lead. There's some things that I need to get fixed in my life. I would like to travel. There's so many things. So, and I'm young, baby. I'm young. You know what I'm saying? So, um, in my mind, in my mind, this is a hurdle I got to get through. And let me, oh, let me tell you, you got to have friends. When I tell you I have the most, I'm just going to cuss, fucking amazing friends ever in life. You know, um, 
a girl, your girl was crying for days and days. The woe is me. I'm really trying not to be that girl. I'm trying to be the, regardless of the outcome, I am trying to be positive. I'm trying to be strong and I'm trying to see the bright side of everything that's happening to me. Maybe me doing this video right now and save somebody else's life who has not had a, a mammogram in years. Girl, go check your boobies out. Go check them out. Listen, I'm very vain. And, you know, I think what's depressing me the most is to not see all this goodness in the mirror, not to be able to see these boobs and that, you know, I ain't gonna say it's tiny, but I got a waist, y'all. Like, you know, I'm bomb. These dudes ain't found that out yet, but I'm bomb. I'm the bomb inside and out. And, you know, my boobs define me. I've had boobs since I've been 11 years old. And so now I'm thinking, girl, you about to be flat chested, but check this out the way I'm looking at it. If it goes to that route, I'm not going to be flat chested. I'm going to have a new set of boobs, baby. No set. And I'm a girl. You ain't going to be able to keep no shirt with no, the, listen, all my shirts going to be backless, right? It's going to take a minute. Listen, I'm going to go through this treatment and chemo or whatever. Whatever I got to do. And I'm going to have some good days and bad days. And I'm going to make sure y'all see that. Because I'm not going to sit up here and make light of the situation. It's a serious situation. But what I do know is your attitude determines your altitude, honey. And I'm riding it high as much as I can. I'm living my life. I'm making plans. I have to. I can't. I can't let this thing beat me, right? I can't let it beat me. I'm going to have some downsides. Okay. All right, devil. You didn't kick me a little bit. But guess what? The battle is not yours, honey. It's the Lord. Well, I got the Lord on my side. And listen, I'm the most, probably most non-deserving, inconsistent, Christian, believing person. Man, I, I'm, not, I'm just going to be keeping 100. I don't pray like I need to pray. I pray with consistency when I need something from him, but he knows my heart and I'm hoping he'll see me through that. Maybe this is a lesson to get me to rely on him a little bit more, right? Because I've had some questions over the year, like, you know, why does all this stuff happen? And maybe I'm not a child of God. I don't know because things keep happening to me and I keep having to be strong. But I'm looking at that like as a blessing, right? It, it's a, it's a blessing, is to have that ability to be strong in the face of adversity. Because there's some people who's going to crack. Some people, baby, you can't walk a mile in my shoes. Do you know what I've been through? Who I am? And guess what? God keeps blessing me. Do I have some issues that I wish were in my life? Absolutely. But we keep getting through it. And guess what? I'm a grandmother four times over today. I finally had a baby girl. I got a lot of blessings. But am I sad, y'all? Am I? Do I have moments of sadness? Absolutely. So I'm not going to sit up here and lie to y'all. I'll be, oh, I'm about to vlog everything, whatever. But I'm going to do my best. I want to be able to present a message that would help just one person. But it helps you go and get diagnosed so that you can be here for your grandkids, your children, whoever the case may be. Take care of you, sis. Take care of you. Enjoy your life. Get your physicals. Make sure you're doing your self-breast examinations. Even though that didn't work for me. My boobie's too big. I just don't. I still, now I know this because now I know I have breast cancer. But I didn't notice, notice anything. So, but do what you can do. Do what you can do. And um, all I'm asking for is prayers um, to keep my spirit high, um, to make whatever route of treatment that I select and that God selects for me to be working and to work quickly and to make this trial journey that I'm about to go through, speed through like lightning. Make me remember, I remember when. I don't want to be going through it and said, I hope this is over soon. I want to be able to look back and say, I made it. So, um, 
I am asking for prayers. I'm asking for light. I'm asking for words of encouragement. Um, I'm a needed. Um, I have a great support system. I have wonderful friends and family. I haven't told everybody in case. And I mean, you guys are more privileged. The only people I've told is my siblings and my close friends. That's it. Nobody else knows, but you know now, right? Um, so it's important to me that I get some type of um, just general consistency. You know, we stand in, you know, stand in agreement with me that this cancer will be out of my body quickly, right? And that everything that I'm going through is a testimony for someone else. Somebody else who's going through this right now. Girl, we got this. We got this. And um, no matter what it might look like, how we might feel for the day, our state of mind, we got this. Make plans, sis. We got 10, 20, 30 more years left. You know, I'm I'm cool with 75, 80 years old. But I'm going to live my life until then because I feel young. And don't I look young? So I just, uh, I got this. All right, I'm out, y'all. I promise I'm going to give you an update. I can't tell you how how um, consistent I'm going to be, but my first appointment is July 13th. I will try to come back after, tell you um, my treatments. I'll even try to do a little footage on that. I don't know. Um, I'm nervous. Um, I'm trying to do as much research as I can, ask, ask the right questions and so I can make an informed decision so me and my family can make a decision for me and the right direction to go. But I love y'all. I'm sorry I keep being MIA, but life continues to happen to me and it's hard for me to remain consistent. Anyway, love y'all. Peace out, Miss TL in the making, honey. I'm a cancer baby now, honey, but I got this. All right, bye.